Yes. <laughs> yes. Got the bullseye. Hit the bullseye. All right. Okay. We've arrived at the birthplace of one of the most interesting and unique individuals in all the history of the world. Some of you might guess the person that I'm referring to. For those you don't know, I'm talking about my wife, Nicole. She was born in Mönchengladbach, Germany, and that's where we're at today. I first visited Germany back in 2007 uh, after a year of being away from Nicole. We had a long distance relationship, so I got on a plane for the very first time in my life, flew across the world from Kentucky to Germany, and spent a couple of weeks during uh, Christmas break. And the very first time I came here, there was something very interesting that has always stuck with me, and that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. It's a garden something that you might not get excited about right away, but it's a very interesting concept. And the name of the garden is Schrebergarten. How do you say it? Schrebergarten. It is basically an allotment of land that uh, someone leases. They rent it and there's a lot of them all together. They're also known as garden colonies and it's a unique feature of urban life here in Germany. Now, these small plots of land are usually allocated to individuals or families for gardening and recreational purposes. They're named after Moritz Strieber, a German physician and urban planner who promoted the idea of these gardens as a way to improve the living conditions of urban dwellers, especially the working class during the 19th century. For my research, I wanted to share some of the key aspects of Strebergarten here in Germany. So number one, the purpose is to serve as green spaces for residents living in densely populated urban areas. So this is unlike anything in the US. I've never heard of it before I came to Germany and I've not seen it really practice anywhere else. But imagine in the US, you live in an apartment in the city and you have no yard, you have nowhere to go to just chill and relax. But imagine if you did have a place that you could rent for a, a low monthly or yearly fee and it was basically yours, you pretty much had the ability to do whatever you wanted to to it. It has a little hut or a small house that you can put a kitchen in, you can store furniture, and whenever you want, weekends or evenings, you can just go there and have some beers or cook out. That is the concept of the Schreiber Garten. We're at Nicole's dad's Schreiber Garten. He's got all kinds of cool fruit trees and flowers. He's got an outdoor grill. We just fried up some chicken and steaks yesterday and enjoyed for dinner. He's got all kinds of cool plants growing. So as you can see, people use these gardens for various activities such as cultivating fruits, vegetables, flowers, as well as for just relaxing or recreation. I'm chasing the kids around with a water gun and they're just going to play around. We play soccer and you just socialize with family and friends. You can have a party and it's very private because number two, we're going to talk about design and layout. So the Schreiber Garden colonies typically consist of small individual plots that range from anywhere from 200 to 400 square meters in size. It's not huge but it's definitely large enough for a family to have some privacy just to get away from their urban dwelling and hang out for a day. Each plot contains a small garden shed or hut. This is the building here behind me. It's got an awning that extends from it so it's actually really nice. Some people just use it to store their garden tools but you can also use it to store outdoor furniture so you can have a place to sit and relax. It's also traditionally used for protection from bad weather. So if there's a storm that comes through, you can just jump into the hut and stay there until the storm passes. The gardens are often separated by hedges or fences to provide privacy and demarcation between the neighboring plots. So as you'll see here, uh, most of the plots here have maybe six to eight foot hedges that separate them from the neighbors and also from the walking paths that allow you to get to each of the plots throughout the, the area here. Number three, rules and regulations. So it's not a free for all here. The Shriver Garden are governed by specific regulations to ensure fair and sustainable use of the land. So there are rules that you have to follow. You can't just 
do whatever you want. You have to make sure that it's kept well and then it's kept nice and clean. The rules usually include restrictions on the types of structures that can be built, the height of the plants, and what types of activities are allowed within the garden. There are also guidelines for maintaining cleanliness and tidiness, so it can't be a mess, which is nice because you don't want to just be hanging out here and it be dirty. Number four is the community and social aspect. Triborough Garden colonies foster a sense of community among the gardeners. Many of these gardens have shared facilities such as playgrounds, communal areas, and sometimes even small cafes or clubhouses. When you walk around, everyone says, hello. If they're German or if they speak a different language that you speak as well, they'll greet you in that language. But it's a very friendly, tight-knit community, I would say. Residents often organize social events, competitions, and festivals to strengthen bonds and promote interaction between each of the gardeners. Number five, environmental benefits. Schreiber Garten contribute to the ecological balance of cities by providing green spaces, promoting biodiversity, and improving air quality. They offer opportunities for organic gardening practices, reducing the use of chemical fertilizers and pesticides. A lot of the fruit trees here, there's no pesticides. You can see they're painted white at the bottom. They have nets around them to help prevent any pests from destroying the plants. So it's a very natural process. And if you have a green thumb, then you will definitely relate to this type of pastime where you can just go out and garden and tend to the trees and the flowers and it's a very relaxing lifestyle. Number six, last but not least, is popular culture here in Germany. The Schreiber Garten had become a part of German popular culture and are often depicted in literature, film, and art. So you may see in movies. They're seen as places of refuge from the hustle and bustle of city life, allowing individuals to connect with nature and enjoy a slower pace of living. So Nicole's dad made an awesome platter of sushi. It's like professional, top grade. I'm gonna sit here and enjoy it while we're still here in the garden. Got the sprinkler going. Kids are playing with Nicole. They're getting shot with some water guns. We plan on doing a couple more things while we're here in Germany, but for the most part, it's just enjoying time with family. If you guys haven't watched our other videos, you can check them out here and we'll see you guys in the next one.